Let's start off with the hottest story of the day. You know, yesterday news broke up, um, broke out with regards to Saraki, and he's been in the news for a while. Saraki, choir governor, dumped APC and joined PDP. First of all, Chukudi, are we going to see an end to this cross carpeting that's going on anytime soon? Never. Okay. All right, so we're going to the details of the story. After weeks of speculations, the president of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, and the choir state governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, have dumped the All Progressives Congress for the opposition, People's Democratic Party. Saraki announced his decision in a statement on his verified social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook on Tuesday. The statement on Facebook read, I wish to inform Nigerians that after extensive consultations, I have decided to take my leave of the All Progressives Congress. Ahmed, on his part, announced his decision via a statement issued on his behalf by his senior special assistant on media and communication, Dr. Muyidin Akoride in Ilori. The statement read, following due consultations with people and in response to calls by major stakeholders in the state, Kwara State Governor Alaji Abdul Fattah Ahmed, today, Tuesday, that was yesterday, defected to the PDP, having realized that the APC can no longer serve as a platform for achieving the aspirations and expectations of the people. So I also gone ahead to explain why he had he had to dump the APC after he denounced after he announced his defection through his social media accounts. Well, the truth is, I have always insisted that looking at Nigeria's political setup or arrangement, it is essentially a struggle for structure. I've said this like <clears throat> countless times. Now, politicians are essentially just about their interest. They really do not care about the Nigerian people. Just let's, let's go back to May 29th, 1999. The return to democratic rule after protracted years of military rule and how Nigerians continue to grapple with poverty and abject penury. 19 years, ask the child that was born in 1999. Assess the, the development of that child and look at the contribution of the country occasioned by, you know, the actions of our leaders in the life of that child. Is it education? Is it healthcare? Is it lifestyle? Is it even about the future? Nigerians are leaving the country in droves, a country that is abundantly blessed with human and natural resources. Why? Because we have people who, rather than manage our resources, they mismanage. And rather than have administration, we have maladministration. And Nigerians continue to suffer. These people have weaponized poverty, and they are using it well against us. We go to the mosque on Friday, go to the church on Sunday, and end up saying it is well. It is not my portion. Because you believe that some sort of divine help will keep you from what is happening in your society. But the truth is, a Gabriel will not come from heaven with a man to say this is how to fix Nigeria. We must become involved in the process. If you look at the press statement that was released by the Senate president, it was essentially about his interest and thousands of supporters. In fact, I, he said that, you know, over 200 appointments have been made without consulting himself and Yakubu Dogara. And he, yeah, juicy is also, is, it has to be juicy appointments. How dare you make juicy appointments without consulting me? This is not, you know, vilifying the Senate president or exonerating the presidency. I have always said it that there are two classes of Nigerians. The political elites, people who are only concerned about their interests. That is why they switch political parties in the morning and in the afternoon and in the night. And you have the majority of the suffering masses of Nigeria who have not realized that sovereignty resides with the people and all the powers emanating thereof. And we must play a part in ensuring that people who are not fit to be class captain And those don't suffering occupy masses are also the people that we care about in this situation. At the end of the day, it's quite ironic that internal party democracy doesn't even exist in a democracy. But let's not even focus on that. There are a few people in our polity, okay, they're cross-carpeting, etc. What exactly does this current situation and what exactly do these constant defections mean for the Nigerian person? You see, it is an affront on our democracy. Every time we say, oh, the democracy is nascent, even though we gained independence in 1960, even though we returned to democratic rule in 1999, even though Ghana is just here, we still claim nascent. Oh, it's all the thieving problems who are growing, you know. But people undermine and subvert the system to the advantage. This is not the first time it has happened. In fact, some footballers have not crossed to certain clubs, some footballers in hot demand have not crossed to certain clubs that a lot of our politicians, they switch. They don't even have summer transfer window. They don't even have winter. They switch at any given opportunity. And this is because of they are only essentially about their interest. See, the constitution is clear. You cannot aspire for office even if, if you don't do that via the platform of a political party. 
And we have two major political parties in Nigeria today going by their presence in the different parts of the country. And this political party... To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.